Now the Trogatronic M277 is a dual VCA, and you can put it anywhere in a patch just like you can another VCA. However, this does have distinctive uses, whether you put it after your entire patch, in the middle after your filter, or earlier in the patch before the filter. Each give different sounds, they're different applications. I'm going to start the way I was originally patched, having this after my sound coming out of the Moog Mother 32. I'm fattening up the Mother 32 with a second waveform coming out of the Expert Sleeper's Disting. It's a triangle and octave down. And again, the original sound is this, particularly through the Moog's filter. I'll hold this note. You see what the harmonics die down to? Something pretty simple, just four harmonics present. There's the square wave out of the mother. And there's a triangle out of the disting. Placing a radical tube module like this at the end of a patch can add anywhere from warmth to crazy overdrive distortion. Let's go ahead and put that in the patch. Just to start off, I'm going to go ahead and hit that low C again. And after the filter is closed down, we look at the spectrograph and we see there's a lot more harmonics present. Again, it gets a bit quieter up high to the point where it cuts out actually as the filter closes down. You might need higher amplitude settings. For those higher notes, but watch out the bass boost. It can really blow you away. There's a middle section here where you really hear the clipping. And then the lower section, you start just cutting out. It almost looks like a half wave rectifier here. Indeed, let's look at this yellow waveform, which is the input waveform, and green, which is the output waveform from the M277. I'll go ahead and change my time base here. So you can see multiple wave cycles on the screen at once. And you can see as the input waveform just goes up a little bit in volume, the output waveform, the green of the M277, really gets quite a boost. So one way of thinking about it is as a very non-linear wave shaper. It's going to treat quiet sounds much different than loud sounds. See, quiet sounds are just a flat line here on the data. Loud sounds get a boost. And also negative excursions get treated different than positive excursions. You can go ahead and dial in some different sounds here. A little bit more open of the filter. Increase the amplitude. Start getting more of that overdrive sound. Pull back a little bit and play around with the drive of the tube circuit. Start to square off the green up away form. And I get both more high harmonics, but also more of a bass boost. Indeed, I think one of the better uses of the M277 is as a drone monster. So this is a non linear wave shaper. If you have an input, such as some beating or modulated waveforms that are changing in amplitude, this will alter their sound depending on how loud they are at any given moment. So if I put on a drone out of the Moog, go down to lower note, start dialing in the trog. You hear how there's a lot of motion in that sound. So drones are another cool application of this module. Now the interesting thing about the M277 is that it does indeed change the waveform quite a bit. You saw it cutting out the waveforms that got low in volume, but also it radically changes the shape of even simple waveforms. I'm going to go ahead and just simplify things with the Moog here. Uh, put on drone mode, go to just the triangle wave coming out of the disting, open up the filter. You see the yellow waveform should be just a pure triangle wave, but we have something very different coming out of the M277. The negative and positive excursions are different, and the resulting waveform is quite different. And I'll speed up the display a little bit here so we can see some more detail. Reduce the beating to freeze the waveform in place here.
there's no real way to get back to that original triangle. At least not with the M277's front panel controls. However, I found if you decrease the input signal coming into the M277, you take it out of this radical wave shaping distortion territory and move it more into warming territory. I can decrease the output level of the Moog and increase the amplitude on the M277 until we get much closer to that original triangle wave. And you see we have a much more mellow set of harmonics on the spectrum right now. This is how you can use the M277 as just a warming device on your output. Really turn down the level of your final signal going into the M277, then play with its amplitude and its drive to add the desired amount of warming to your signal. I'll go out of drone, play a few notes. Filter envelope. Much warmer than that straight triangle sound. Sounds kind of boring by comparison now, even if I turn it up. Compared to tube warmth from the M277. Now the funny thing about the M277 is that it does change how it reacts depending on the waveform coming into it. You saw we got pretty close to that input triangle waveform. Pull the drive out of here. However, if I have to switch over to the sawtooth wave on Moog, you see the output looks radically different. The rising edge of that input waveform is causing an overshoot on the output of the Trogatronic. And there's no real way to dial that overshoot out, even if I reduce the volume. So for things like sine waves and triangle waves, you can use this as a warming device. For waves that have very strong transitions, you might as well embrace that overshoot and create some new distortion. We're getting that squared off top now. It reminds me of what things like, say, a Moog CB3 mixer does to add a little extra bass oomph to a sound. When we see a low frequency harmonic appearing occasionally in the spectrograph. And a weird fizz as it fades away and collapses around that idiosyncrasy into a kind of a distorted, almost like bit crush silence. The drive. So that's using it as an output warmer or distortion device. In the next movie, we'll look at using it as a stereo processor.